Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the chaos that is my bench. Um, okay, yeah, I did a video on how to cut saw teeth last week and we're gonna do another one today because um, this thing is really surprising. Last time on Wood by Wright, uh, we, we, we took a hacksaw and put a bunch of C-clamps on it and made a jig that cuts sawtooth really quick and efficiently. This came about as an idea from a channel called A2 Wood Art. And uh, he did some really cool things with it and I changed it a little bit and I kind of like it and then a bunch of people put other suggestions in there. Uh, but one of the things in the back of my mind was a video I saw about a week or two before I made this one and I thought it'll never work. There's a YouTube channel called The Woodman Dan, and he makes this weird little jig that is absolutely gorgeous. And, and if you haven't seen his channel, he does things to the nth degree. He is, uh, he is a true master craftsman. Uh, unlike what we do here, um, he's doing things to the perfection state, and they are beautiful. Does an amazing, amazing job. But he made this little jig for sawtooth making, and I. I my initial, my initial thought was, wow, that's a really gorgeous tool. But this is wood by right. We kind of like to live in reality. The jig he made was one of those that he thought through everything ahead of time. It was just perfect. It was gorgeous. It worked functionally. It was multiple adjustable. It was fast. It was efficient. And it was just, yes! It was the kind of thing you would expect to buy for four or $500. Actually, you'd probably spend a lot more than that on it because it was just drop dead gorgeous. Usually I like to stay away from those things because I'd rather things just be quick and simple, put together, have some fun in the shop, and don't really worry about the perfection, just have a fun time. And a lot of times those perfection jobs, uh, they don't quite fit me in the channel. But the actual jig itself, the functionality to it, it really got me thinking. And it really got me thinking. And after doing a whole pile of cuts with these C-clamps on here, I got to thinking, you know, I really can't poo-poo something just because it's perfect. Which should be obvious, but this is wood by right. I'm a little crazy around here. I wonder if I can make a less perfect version of it. Well, that was easy. And then as I was getting ready to shoot this video, another friend of the channel uploaded a video from Herons at Home, and he made a less perfect version of the jig as well. So, maybe I should give this thing a try. And don't worry, I'll leave links to all those videos down below because there's a lot of great information in them. So, here's what this thing is. It's a block of wood, about three quarter by one inch, with a slot cut down it from a saw. And at the other end, I pre-drilled a hole, put a screw into it, and then I put the end of a hacksaw on here. Then we can just take a screwdriver and tighten this down on until that hacksaw is tight against the surface. And I wanna rotate it until the square is there. And there's what we got. And that's the total jig. A scrap piece of wood, the end of a hacksaw blade, and a screw. So to make this work, I'm gonna take the hacksaw and I'm gonna make my first tooth. That one doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be a location. Then I take this block with the slot, put the slot over the plate, and I drag it back until it falls into that clip. Now that saw blade piece is in that hole, and the screw is spaced out a certain amount, so I put this up against the screw, and now, now I got a tooth the exact space away. Can do it again to the new slot. And just like that, we're getting perfect teeth. This is incredibly fast. And I'm getting these great teeth that I can work off of. I have this jig set up to give me nine PPI. And all you need to do to get a different PPI is put a different head on there. If you want bigger teeth, you could put washers in behind it and that would space the head out so you'd have more space in between it. So you want the thickness of your saw plate plus the thickness of your screw head to be the distance between your cuts, which is really easy to calculate. You put a cal caliper on the two and you got it. The screw head I chose for this one was actually a little bit too thick. So I took a file to it and filed it down to the exact thickness I wanted. And so now I've got that spacing. So you've got the spacing of the saw plate plus the screw head equals your thickness. Or in this case, I want 0 0.11 for a nine PPI saw. And with just the screw heads alone, I can change the sizing from around a 13 PPI um, all the way up to something around a seven, um, which is a lot of the saw teeth you're gonna be cutting. 
And if you want something bigger, like a four or five, you just put a couple washers behind it and you've got the same thing. You can just figure out what is the total thickness of that stack, and that's the spacing between your teeth. Really easy. The one big downside to this method is there isn't a depth stop, so you go down the same depth every time. But I'm getting them relatively closely, and I find that as long as I do stroke, 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 I get about what I want. Uh, it depends on the length of the saw and things of that nature, but it works out pretty well. And it is incredibly fast. It's far faster than the separating jig. To make the little hacksaw piece, I grab an old hacksaw that is just worn out, and I'm gonna grab the pair of pliers or vice grips. And Oops, that hurt. Eey and crimp it down on here a little bit below that hole, and then we're just going to bend it back and forth. Nice thing about hacksaw blades is they're very, very brittle, and you'll be able to snap it off and get something right about what you want. It looks bad, but what you're basically seeing is the paint on there. You get an actual pretty straight cut on there. Come in with a file, and I can just clean off that excess paint right on the side or any small burrs, and just like that, we've got a piece ready to go in there and used. Really dumb little jig that works really well. And I am just actually very, very surprised at this. Anyone can make this. It took me five, 10 minutes to whip this up and I was cutting teeth. So now I've actually created quite literally thousands of teeth trying these two different methods. And I've, I've gone through the three saws that I'm making as well as I've filed down and refiled several saw plate scraps that I have to try at different methods. And which method would I use? Honestly, if I'm doing one saw, this is the way I'm gonna go. This is a faster jig to make. It is a simpler jig. It makes faster cuts. It is just as repeatable. It's gonna take a little bit more skill because you can move the saw around, but it works really well. However, if I were gonna be making a bunch of them, I don't think I would do it the C-clamps, but I would make something that's a little bit better. I've thought about several ways of having a channel that goes and it locks them down in there. There are several different ways that you could actually make a jig to have this hacksaw method actually work very, very quickly. And if I had the time to make one of those really accurate over-engineered jigs, and I had a lot of saws to do, I'd probably go the saw method that I showed last time. But for the average person, that's crazy easy. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's kind of fun in woodworking when you find one of those skills that just clicks, and this makes so much sense. Now you could make this thing really pretty. Go check out the Woodman Dan, um, and his design is just off the books, just crazy gorgeous and functional and adjustable and different shims you can put in there and all the bells and whistles you could ask for. Or you could make something halfway between scrap junk of wood and Woodman Dan and go take a look at Herons at Home and his jig. Now he made his out of scrap as well, but it's a little more adjustable, a little more functional. Different strokes for different folks. I love it when I find a little jig or tool that pops up that makes life easy and is surprisingly fun to use. A lot of times when you start getting into these jigs, they become a little less fun. And putting the clamps on this, it's more fun than just freehanding it, but it's not as much fun as this thing. So yeah, I'm probably gonna be using this more. So I am sorry, but uh, next week's video won't be about cutting saw teeth. Uh, we will do something different and I've got a fun few ideas for that. Uh, but this was one of those things that I had to wrap my brain around this before I'd even attempt it. And unfortunately I didn't wrap my brain around it until after trying the C-clamps and that, which I really like that. That's kind of a fun, interesting way to do it. And if you haven't seen the video on that, go take a look at A2 Wood Art. Um, he's got some other cool ideas on there. But this one, this one actually takes the cake and a dumb little jig that makes life fun. Well, that's kind of what Wood by Right's all about. So I hope you like it. If you have any comments or ideas or other things that could do this even better, let me know those as well. I'll take a look at them and who knows, might turns into a video as well. So throw those comments down below as well as hitting like, share, subscribing. Thank you, uh, those help the channel. They help us grow and help us get in front of more people. That just, it means a lot. That is the juice by which YouTube runs. And if you wanna help out the channel with that, that really does help us out. Anytime you throw a comment down below, like, share, subscribe, or even put just comment down below, Thank you, that means a lot. You can take it one step farther. There are a bunch of people scrolling over here on the side. They are the patrons on Patreon. And without patrons on Patreon, we wouldn't be here. As well as that, members here on YouTube who've clicked that little join button down below. We get special perks for both members and patrons. And thank you, it means more than I can say. And we would not be here because we are completely sponsored by you, the viewers. Thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about those, you can go down below, you click the links, you know what to do. It's YouTube. Everyone knows what to do there. <laughs> but I think that'll do it for now. So until next time, have a wonderful day. Next time on Wood by Right, seven more jigs for cutting saw teeth. There's more than two ways to skin a cat, and 
Well, I guess that's next week's video.